Hello, Moto America fans. It's time for another episode of Off Track with Carruthers and Bice. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and you may even learn something from this unlikely pair and their special guest. The mic is yours, Paul and Sean. Hello, Moto America fans. This is Sean Bice, about as far away from home as I can be. With this edition of Off Track with Carruthers and Bice, I'm joined by our communications manager, Paul Carruthers, to my right. And we are in the Pacific Northwest, Shelton, Washington. The air is a little different up here. It's Why? a little cleaner. I don't know. It's cleaner or something. Cleaner than Ohio? It's, yeah, we get, we're, a little, we're a little dank. <laughs> Not the good way of dank like the kids say nowadays. We're talking like... Yeah, I don't think High there humidity. is a good dank. Well, the dank is around here for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and we're we're obviously joined by Bobby Fong, who is a rep for D- D- Dainese. How many different ways is there to pronounce that word, by the way? It's Dainese. Dainese. Yeah, I, you gotta I go know. like there's this a, too. There's there's Dainese, there's Dainese, there's uh, yeah. fuck, there's so many different ways to say it. I mean, ever since I've worked there, everybody's like, you got to say it the proper way. It's Dainese. Dainese. Yeah, yeah. Dainese. Dainese. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say it that Sounds way. Japanese. <laughs> Dainese. Yeah. It's like Alpine Star. You had to say Alpina Star. You know? It's like, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Alpina wow. Star. Yeah. That's weird. So among the many things that Mr. Robert Bobby Fong does is he works for Dainese, but he also Good, races pretty much every motorcycle known to mankind and has over the years. Uh, there was a time when I used to call him Bobby Ducati because that was a long time ago when he raced a Ducati, but you haven't been on a Ducati in a long time, have you? No, it'd be nice to get on one though. That'd be nice. I, I heard they're pretty good. <laughs> heard so, they're pretty yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. And then he was Bobby Triumph. Bobby Triumph. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For a long time. But you know, the thing with Bobby is, so Bobby is going to get to find out something that he's wondered for a while, which is what the hell is with those Yamaha R1s, especially those attack bikes. And he's going to get on what we understand to be an ex Jake Gagne, uh, former attack performance, y- Yamaha YZF R1 full on super bike with that crazy swing arm that Richard Stamboli builds. And he's subbing, filling in for David Anthony, Aussie Dave Anthony. And how did that come about, Bobby? Oh, man, we've been, uh, well, I, when the first time I saw it, started like at a test maybe a few months ago. And I saw the, I saw Dave with his new R1. I'm like, man, if Dave ever stopped racing in the future, I was like, man, that's a good bike to probably get on. And uh, actually Dave, Dave started talking to me at Road America uh, a few weeks ago and He's like, hey, man, I, I don't know the deal, but, uh, you know, possibility that, you know, you, you could probably ride this R1. And I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. Just yeah. I just want to ride the bike. Yeah. And, uh, you know, meanwhile, I've been talking to Chris Ulrich as well because there was rumors going on that, you know, Tony was going to retire. And there was a whole bunch of rumors that there was going to be a spot available. So I was talking to Chris Ulrich. But the main thing with that was uh, Suzuki didn't want me to race a bagger. And so you're not called was, bagger Bob for nothing. Bagger bagger Bob, Bob. I know. And it was like, and I honestly, like I'm, I'm enjoying my time in the bagger class. Now yeah. that we're doing good and obviously doing good. You, you have fun when you're, when you're not winning, it's not fun. But, um, anyways, I agreed to Dave's, Dave's R1 and man, I'm, I'm stoked to be it, like to ride the thing. I got to be patient though, as much as like, it's the bike and all that stuff. You know, we don't have Cornwall or Stamboli there, you know, with the crew and everything. I got Robbie Peterson. And which is great. Ceiling and Dave, which is, I got a good crew on my yeah. side. Yeah. Um, but I got to be personally patient with myself and riding the bagger too. So I rode, I rode a sport bike last year, the end of the year after riding the bagger all year long. And I got on the sport bike and I'm like, man, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I, this thing is so foreign to me. Like the brakes were so touchy. Um, you know, and the throttle response, everything was just so foreign to me. I still don't a ride and all that stuff and lean angle, the basics, but just like getting on a sport bike to a bagger is so different. Yeah. Um, so it's probably going to be a big learning. Like it's going to be a big shock tomorrow morning getting on a super bike after riding a bagger. I mean, yeah, you can ride the hell out of the bagger, which is good. It's still keeping me sharp between the ears, but a super bike's a different story. So mm-hmm. I'm going to need time for sure. And I got to be realistic with my expectations. Everybody's up to speed. You know, it's the middle of the year, you know, all this stuff. And yeah, just gotta, who knows? I might surprise myself. I don't know. He's going to be fine. Yeah. (laughs) No, he's going to be, well, Jake, Jake. I talked to Jake today, Gagne. He said, oh, no, he'll be fast right out of the box on that thing. So I, don't th- I think he's just playing it. He's, he's just playing it. <laughs> I up. love he's, it. He's a nice guy. I love the I, gamesmanship. But, yeah. <laughs> it's all he's good. a team player with yeah. all the Yamaha boys. Yeah. But, uh, who knows? I don't know. I might surprise myself. I might be really disappointed. But 
Um, either way, I'm going to go have fun and I'm going to ride that hooligan bike this weekend um, for Rolling Sands. So yeah. that'd be uh, that'd be interesting. And yeah, so that's the thing I want to point out. So Bobby races in Mission King of the Baggers on an Indian Challenger, but he also races in the Mission Super Hooligan National Championship on an FTR 1200 uh, Indian. So yeah. he's like. It's going to be interesting, right? This weekend, King of the Baggers is not here, but they will be at Laguna Seca. We don't know what's going to happen after this weekend as far as the superbike ride, but he's going to be on a bagger uh, at Laguna, and we'll have to find out about the Super Hooligan situation and the one in Superbike. Are you tomorrow, your number is 50. Yeah. Are you going to be 50, not 25? I better be 50. <laughs> <laughs> I better be 50. He, he'll be 50. I don't okay. know. Yeah. We're going to fight somebody. The rider, we're we're yeah, going to fight do. somebody if they have my number running out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So. I Which thought is, we retired that number. We didn't. 50? Yeah. I can't even think of it. <laughs> well, we were just I talking. 2021, last, last year of number 50. Well, we yeah. were just talking. We Paul, Paul and I actually know about this. 50 back in the day was John Betancourt. We've, well, yeah, we just saw a photo. Yeah, we just saw why. a photo of that. So. That's funny. But, I mean, 50, you're known for that for sure. And. I did a little poll today where I put out a po photo of, of, we didn't have a photo of you on the bike, but we had a photo of David Anthony on the bike with 25 and it got me to thinking, no, he's going to be 50, but there's a lot of support for you and social media. I know you hate social media, but you know, it's believe it or not, believe it or not, <laughs> I actually tried to get my social media back uh. yesterday and I don't know how to get it back. It's so I, it's you kinda, should, you this is it. another story, but it's it's another story for another day. But long story short, I had to make a different. E I got hacked at one point. I had to make a damn different email. All this stuff to like get my email back, and I forgot what email I. I just made up this little chinky email just to get like at the time, and I don't even know what email I use. Like I just and I can't even get it back. <clears throat> yeah. I so you, should, you should know how to get it back because you've turned it off a hundred times. That somebody was, calls, no, somebody no, no. writes Bobby Fong's a dickhead each day. He quits <laughs> social media. No, 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 no. I'm serious because I <laughs> lost my phone. I lost my phone like three, four months ago and had all my information of all the little uh -huh. emails and all this stuff in my notes. And that disappeared. I yeah. didn't back anything up on that phone. You have your bank information, everything, your PIN dude, number? Everything. Do you have any money left? It, no, thank oh. God. Like that, I had a, I just changed my password right before I lost my phone too. So I'm like, they're for sure going to guess one, two, three, four, five. You know, <laughs> like I better change this thing. So now, so a couple things at Road America, I found out, and I'm I'm actually quite fond of Robert Ward, going way back to Richie Oliver and how he worked with him and everything, and a great guy. And I remember specifically when he retired, and I talked to you about this at Road America, the fact that, I mean, he's kind of been gone for a little while, and he told me the only person he would come out of retirement and work with is Bobby Fung, and I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. So he works with you on the Indian program. Does he? Is it King of the Baggers and the Hooligan Project, too? or Unfortunately, not for the Hooligans. <laughs> okay. Um, we try to get him for the Hooligans, and honestly, throughout the years, we me and Robert, uh, we've grown pretty close, uh, pretty tight. And, you know, we, we still call each other and check in. And uh, we had a lot of success to, together. And I try to get him to come out this weekend, but he has nothing. He doesn't want to do anything with that hooligan project. Oh, OK. Yeah, so yeah. he's not here at all then? No, no. OK. And I got my guy Cameron with a mustache. Yeah, and yeah. I got me and mustache this weekend. That's yeah. it. I was just so. talking to him quite a bit. Yeah. I got to talk about that bike for a minute. I was just over in tech looking yeah. it over. It looks sweet. I mean, Bobby, I yeah, saw it's deadly to ride, but it is, is it deadly? sweet. Yeah. Because Bobby, I I was like, I think I could sit on that bike and win on that thing. What makes it deadly? It wobbles it's or what? It's a cool looking bike. It's just speed wobbles. I mean, it just kills you out there. I'm, I'm arm pump central in one lap on oh, that really? thing. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> but it's really well, standard it, looking, though. It feels like a normal street it, motorcycle. It's honestly, it is fun. To, it is fun yeah. to ride. It, it's pretty, for me, it's pretty physical. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's just because we don't ride it. You know yeah. what I mean? We just go out and we just like, oh, we'll just throw this setting out. It, you know what I mean? Like we never had a crew chief for the thing. It was just like, yeah, we, these spring rates might work. And we just go out there and Roland wants to me to race it this weekend, which I want to go out and win. But when you don't test it and you just go out and show up and you're trying to compete against the factory Indian team who was just here two days ago, testing for two days, you know what I mean? They expect yeah. me to go out and win. It's like, Hey, you Are want me to do this to do thing? That? Do we have a scoop here? No. It, well, I think for the hooligans, you're okay. Like I think, I think no, you're right. you are. I think you, you are. are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Tyler O'Hara was on the on the track a couple days ago. Then yeah, which is fine. I'm not worried about no. it. But then no, when, when they just want me to show up and think that I'm going to go out and win, it's like, hey, like, come on, yeah. give me some slack here, dude. Like, if I'm not top of the timesheets, like, give me some slack. I don't right. want to do this anyways. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, but let's talk yeah, about yeah. the baggers program. I mean, look yeah. what you're doing in that. 
I, I'm no, I'm I'm happy about what we've been doing on the baggers. All year has actually been pretty good. Like we just had like some weird mechanicals throughout the year, but uh, the pace has been there. We've had the pace and we're improving each time we're on the bike. And now like, I think we got to a point where like, Hey, like I can get on this thing and I know what it's going to do. And I, I'm really comfortable with the bike right now. So yeah. that's, that's a positive for sure. Yeah. So, um, and you know, it was good to, it was good to get the win last race. And then Laguna's going to be a different story though. Um, those Harleys go good. Kyle goes good at that place. Um, I, I always do good at date, uh, Laguna, but that's probably like, out of all the tracks we go to, that's probably like, I dislike that place out of all the places we go to. It's funny because it's like your home track and home track. It's Laguna Seca, and you know, like man, I just hate that place. I don't know what it is. Really, I always you do, do? Yeah, I, I do well there. Yeah, I just I do not like it. I do not like the layout whatsoever. Yeah. So it's funny because um, a lot of people, a lot of people don't. There's tracks like that that a lot of people don't like that you would expect them to like. Yeah. And it's also a track where you really should do well because a lot of people, there's a lot of attention Everybody's on it. Everybody's there. It's like Especially when it was World Superbike and MotoGP. Mm -hmm. And Josh Hayes, I think, complained. Yeah, told he doesn't like that He didn't like nope, it. Nope, he doesn't But he like goes, it. I have to go good there because otherwise, yeah. you know, this is where everyone's yeah. watching. And it's Yam it was important for Yamaha, too. Yeah, it's um, just a good place to be good at. <laughs> yeah. So, where Bobby, I, something I don't really know about you because- for a while, you were like living in Wisconsin, I think. And are I've you from everywhere. Stockton? Is I'm that... from Stockton. Yeah, yeah, my family's still in Stockton. I'm from Stockton. Um, we call it Stinky Stockton now. Um, and uh, <laughs> and you're a flat tracker. You did a lot of yep. Lodi Cycle Bowl. Yeah, I was. I, my family still. I grew up like literally five minutes from Lodi Cycle okay. Bowl, and my family still lives there. So. And, and is that that's how you got started? Just because it was yeah. nearby and it was the thing to do? And yeah, yeah. Did you know anything about Kenny Roberts and any of that stuff as a kid? No, like as a like when I barely started. No, okay. I, mean, I, I think my dad did a little bit just because he was like around the Harley Davidson dealerships and all that stuff. Yep. Um, but then obviously as a child and you, you start meeting Nate Waite, Gator Waite, Matt yeah, Waite. Sure. Right, we remember. Nickname, yeah. And then you get, you know, the Jorgensen's. Yep. Um, Alex and so, Toby. And yeah, yeah. My dad worked at Jorgie's for years. Uh, okay. Uh, and was a parts manager for Alex Jorgensen, Kim Jorgensen, John Jorgensen. Wow. So, um, I grew up with them, uh, riding motocross. I still ride motor. Whenever I'm back in Northern California, I still ride, uh, motocross and stuff with the Jorgensen's. Yeah. Um, uh, Alex and David. So, um, but no, I grew up with a lot of fast guys, uh, and that's kind of helped me, uh, you know, to where I'm at today. And yeah, a lot of fast guys came from Lodi. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. amazing. That little, how... that little hell hole of a track, right? There. I mean, it's not a hell hole. I mean, <laughs> it's just it, the area in general, the little dirt, the, the little dirt bowl. Yeah. You know, it's, is it, it's banked, right? I mean, it's that's banked. A, no, man, yeah. they've, there's it's a like a little fast, ascot. Yeah, no, it is. And a lot of fast guys yeah. came from there. Yeah, um, we learned so. that they built a bridge, and the dirt that they took out to build that bridge is the hole that was created is what created the Lodi Cycle Bowl. So yeah. that's what we heard. <laughs> yeah. A Literally. bridge. Yeah, they built a bridge. They used the they they. Got, I never heard that. That's yeah. the first time. It's but some, you could be right. It's honestly. some overpass for the highway, and the dirt they took out that hole. Sometimes they turn them into a lake, but that they formed it into this bowl, wow. and that's where the Lodi Cycle Bowl yeah. started. That place has taught me a lot, man. It's still. T I mean, a lot of fast kids are still coming out of there. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, what 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 does that teach you? Because I want to ask you this. Of course, we all know, or at least most of us do, that this whole thing about learning how to steer with the rear end and all that. Well, we're in the day of electronics on a super bike, yeah. especially. So even if you work with electronics, steering with the rear end is still something? For sure. Okay. I mean, you always got to, I mean, riding a motorcycle is riding a motorcycle. The, the electronics definitely does a big part of, you know, when you're riding it, it, it plays a big part. But at the end of the day, it's like you still got to learn how to ride it. When you got to, there's sometimes you got to ride around it. You know what I mean? Like throttle control, flat tracks, all throttle control, really. You know what I mean? Steering with the rear end or keeping the wheels in line. It just really depends on what the condition gives you in that given day on flat track. But growing up at Lodi, it's like some weekends would be, you know, you got to road race it around, keep the wheels in line. Some days you got to back it in and square it off in the middle and then point and shoot it. So it kind of teaches you a big fair of a little bit of everything in riding and um, I was like the TTs growing up. So I already knew like as a young kid at flat track, we already knew like my goal was to go road racing. Really? Yeah. As a young kid, even like when I was like maybe seven, our goal was already to go road racing because, uh, I just love the TTs. I love going right. Okay. It was yeah. like the main thing. You don't want to just I, go left. I love going right. Like yeah. if there was right, I rode, we we're at, <laughs> we we're at JD Beach's house last year and I haven't rode flat track in years and we did his little oval track. And we went right. We're like, hey, let's go right. I'm like, 
man, if there was professional flat track racing that goes right, mm, you'd be grand I'm national sure champion. I'd be grand national champion. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's how I felt in my head, at yeah. least. Um, but no, I just loved going right. And as a kid, we're like, you know, at the time when we we're kids, like, man, these road racers are, they're making big money. Like, this is where the money's at. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, and obviously right when I got pro, it was like, then everybody you, was making found out. nothing, you know what I mean? Right, <laughs> like, right. And I just stuck it out. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's a perfect segue. I wanted to talk to you about that because we bring this up sometimes. It's not like, it's different than it was. That doesn't mean it's not as good because we feel it is, but there are only a handful of these riders that are paid at salary by factories to race. And we can name a, f- a couple of them, a few of them. Yeah. You've danced around that, but you work for a company, Dianese. Yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to say it again. <laughs> you do, you're saying it right. You're doing good, my friend. <laughs> and you work for Indy, Indian, uh, Roland Sands, and you're going to r- r- ride a Yamaha for David Anthony. There's some income involved in all of that. And I know a lot of that's that you enjoy to ri- you enjoy writing. That's the big part of it. But you put how do you put stuff together to make a living? I don't know how you guys do it. So it started. So when I got after M4 in 2021, they were paying me a salary. We didn't have too good of a year. We just had a lot of bad luck. We had some flash of the brilliance that year, um, but then I didn't continue in 2022 with them. And I started talking with. It was originally going to be with a factory Indian. And for whatever reason, they didn't pick me. Um, so I went with Roland. Um, he did a test, and he was the fastest rider. Yeah. I can say that. <laughs> no, and honestly, like there was, they were like, oh, man, we want to beat Harley. We want to beat Harley. And then I go to the test, and we did pretty well at the test. And they're like, oh, we're going to go. Fastest rider. Yeah. <laughs> we're looking, we're going to go this route. And I actually got frustrated. I got really like, because at the time, I was like, when I tested the bagger, it wasn't that big yet. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't as popular as what it is now. And I go, and I'm like, man, why, why didn't you just pick me? Like, oh, we're just gonna go another route, you know. So I was pretty bitter, and I was pretty open to yeah. Gary Gray. Openly and bitter. Yeah, I was openly bitter towards him. <laughs> and at the time, I'm like, well, what do I have to lose? Like, what not to get a bagger ride? And that was in my head at the time, you know what I mean? I was just like, whatever. So, thankfully, it ended up working out with Roland Sands and Steve Delorenzi and Indian still supporting us and all that stuff, which is great. And I'm glad I stuck it out because. You know, we're having some success in the baggers and baggers are blown up. I mean, this is, I mean, I feel like most of the people who come to the races are bagger people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they don't like as much as I love to still be on a super bike and stuff like people are here to watch a majority of the people are to here to watch the baggers go around. I mean, like my, all my dad's friends and everybody like that's all they really they're like, oh, man, I want to go watch the baggers. Yeah. You know, like they don't care about super bikes as much as baggers. Um but no, I'm riding for Roland Sands and uh, kind of steered off subject there. But That's I'm okay. riding for Roland and uh, Steve Delorenzi on the baggers and making a little bit of coin doing that. And I was working for Alpine Stars last year as well as doing that. And then Alpine Stars this year said, um, you know, either pick racing or pick Alpine Stars. So I had to go a different Alpine. Alpine Stars. Um, <laughs> And uh, I had to go. <laughs> I had to go a different. Basically, I, I chose my job, and then it didn't work out. And then I chose racing again. So it was kind of a back and forth seesaw there. And then I ended up going with Dianese, um, who is now I'm the events coordinator, grassroots specialist, events coordinator, race and support guy, shipping wow. guy, a little bit of everything. Yeah. There's not many people in the U.S. with Dianese. So, okay. Um, but I'm more the events guy. It's a different deal in Alpine Stars. We don't do like proper race support, like as in uh supporting uh, we don't have a lot of supported athletes like if you basically if you deploy your airbag on a race weekend um and you're a paying customer i'll come repack your airbag at the track for for a cost and you get it there within the next you know 30 minutes or so however Mm -hmm. long it takes me to do it um but yeah now i'm working for dynasty getting uh getting some income and they're letting me race on the race weekends which is awesome so as long as it doesn't affect my day job i think there'll be still be happy is it yeah. hard to, to do all that it's a lot it's definitely a lot it's like even today it's like i don't it's like even during the week like it's i'll be really busy for a little bit and then it's like man i gotta be a professional racer and i gotta look out for my health which i always do like people who know me like i'm always into working out. like that's just what i do i don't just stop racing and then stop working out like right. that's just 
I'll yeah, you'll work like out forever. Let's work out forever, and I don't, I'll just blow up like a balloon if I if I didn't, you know, um, <laughs> a little balloon. <laughs> yeah, dude, seriously, my, I have triple chins. Uh, so I, I, I'm still staying fit, but then like during the day, like during the week, it's like, hey, I got to be okay. I got to plan my breakfast, lunch, dinner because I want to eat good. I want to cook good. But then when I travel, I got to travel. Like I can't stop at McDonald's to eat. I got to make sure I'm eating at this Fufu or Yannick grass fed place or whatever. And then, oh, I got to make time to do this email or this team's call or I got to run. So I'm like, lately I'm like, I'm on a team's call running with it, you know, on mute or something like that or on a bike ride. So I'm trying to make time for all this. And most people are like, man, well, you're not that busy at work, but it's like, when you're trying to do everything mm-hmm. decent yeah. and I'm trying to ride my dirt bike too. And then where I'm, where I live at, it's like the closest thing's an hour and a half with no traffic. You know, that's time too, time and money. So you're like trying to be a professional racer, trying to ride dirt bikes, trying to eat healthy, trying to do work, trying to, you know, s- stay a good, you know, good adult and pay your bills and all that stuff. It's just kind of, it's, I am stretched pretty thin, but I feel like I'm still doing a good job at everything where I, it's nothing's lacking yet. Yeah. So are are you enjoying your life? Yeah, no, I am, especially okay. where I live at now too. Yeah. In Southern California, it's pretty nice. Yeah. And riding the bagger, do you enjoy riding that motorcycle? Yeah, no, I do. I what, do. What is it about it? The power, the fact that you're wrestling a big, what is it? The fact that we can do what freaking you- <laughs> 20s or 19s at Road America on a 650 pound motorcycle That's is crazy. pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. And then you get off that thing like, man, how the hell are we doing this on this bike? <laughs> <laughs> like I don't even understand it, but the racing is excellent. I mean, it's crazy. The Moto America have made everything so close now. Like the Harleys and Indians and privateers and factories were all competing, and the times are really close. Like they did, Moto America did a great job in organizing the tra- uh, the class and the rule structure, and you know toning down on the testing, all that stuff. And now everybody's pretty tight, and the racing's great. I yeah, mean, you could see last race weekend. I mean, the racing's good you know it was crazy and yeah, i enjoy it good. you know it's hard it's it's hard for the close racing on those things too though but i feel like it's way more sketchy racing close on those things because we're so wide yes we're so damn wide on the yep. things like you got to be like oh man i'm gonna pass this dude but i gotta be way more inside than what i really want to be and then you just got to go for it you know what i mean yeah. like you can't just like slowly like here like you can inch in and then just let off the brakes and then you can, you know, grab the brakes again. Here, it's like, you got to commit. You're like, I'm just going to run wide. And yeah. I'm going to run us both wide. You right. know, like, <laughs> well, no, there's been a couple times yeah. where you've made some ter- passes that are like, whoa, how did he even fit that in there with that? It's spe- I don't even think about a 630-pound bike with that that's that wide. How did you make that pass? How did you fit that big thing in there? Yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, there is that. <laughs> no, but I, honestly, you just got to go for it. <laughs> honestly, yeah. you just got to go for it. Uh, it's, it, is, it is sketchy at some points, but, man, they handle pretty damn good. They're, they're a wet noodle at times, but yeah. you, they handle good and— they're doing a good job. And then at there's it. that Brainerd move where he rides around the outside of them. And well, then that's. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I well, just. Well, rent was due. Rent was due. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. We're all motivated rent was by due. Steve yeah, yeah. Star. Living in Southern California ain't cheap. We're yeah. all motivated by different yeah. things, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And rent so most was of the due. time, money. Yeah. Um, so, the, but just quickly, we're going to wrap up, but quickly on the Superbike. Do you know yet, like, is it just for this round and we'll see, or what are we doing? Um, so the original thing was, uh, we'll just talk that if, if the weekend goes great, like everything's smooth, we'll talk about Laguna. Um, he was like, it was to be a race by race thing. If it, if you don't like it and you know, or even if you like it and you don't want to do it, just let me know. Like it, everything's pretty open. It was just a handshake deal, a fist pump deal, you yeah. know, it was just, Hey, we'll try to go out and have some fun and you know, see what we can do. Yeah. One of the brilliant comments on, uh, I got to share it with you on social media. Yeah. Somebody said, as long as his airbag goes off on the start line, he's probably going to win the race. So, you know, <laughs> it's just to get this to the world, I did not touch my airbag. And you know, honestly, it was a, it was a, it was a fluke deal. And that honestly, that stuff never happens. Um, except for the guy that works on it. Except for, it has to be my luck. Honestly, it was uh, kick some kid that day or something, you know? Um, 
No, it was a fluke deal, and uh, that stuff doesn't happen usually. It, the The chance of that usually happen on a DR airbag is really slim. Um, so it was something that went faulty, and uh, we sent the the data to Italy. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah you yeah. want to find so, out what yeah, happened? Yeah, yeah. So it was it was a fluke deal that never really happens, and okay. of course, it happens to me, yeah. the Dionysia <laughs> guy. You know, so um, I thought it was yeah. classic. You became a legend, uh, even more of a legend. I never of touched that. that in my suit either. So everybody thought it was like, dude, you messed yeah. up your airbag. Well, you, yeah. they thought you were shaking or something. I did. No, yeah. I did. I was like, went to the I went to the damn grid and just like shaking my arms, just like do a little pump up session, and then <laughs> I, I definitely pumped up. Obviously. <laughs> so it blew up. Yeah. So that's what so, they're looking for. Just yeah. So you know this weekend. But. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. But you know we got Bobby Fong. He's in the Medallia Superbike uh, class this week weekend on a Aussie Dave Anthony. It's a Wrench Motorcycles number fifty number Yamaha R1 five, oh. Superbike. Yeah. And he's also in Mission Super Hooligan Championship National Championship this weekend on an Indian. So you're gonna get a ch- couple chances, four races to see Bobby in action. So. Yeah. You know, as always, Bobby, we love having you on here. Um, Thanks Thanks, for being with us. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Cheers, guys.